this video, I'm going to show you the main features of new upcoming version Apache Demeter 5.2. A little some words about me. I'm performance expert at Ubic Engineering and lead developer of Ubic Load Pack Team, set of enterprise plugins for Demeter and load testing professional service. I'm also Apache Demeter committer since 2011. I've co-authored a book about Demeter called Master Demeter from performance testing to DevOps which you can find at LeanPub and PackPub, and I contribute to Gmeter ecosystem. Here are some of the projects I contribute to. So let's see what's in this new release. So Neo4g has now support for load testing in Gmeter, thanks to a contribution by GraphOware. They have contributed a new sampler for both protocol, uh, in case you don't know Neo4g, it's a graph database. You can find some information on their website. And this plugin is the result of a global graph hack uh, and is, it's one of the three winners of this hack. So it's great to have this contribution uh, in Gmeter by this, this team. So uh, let's see how it works. So first you add uh, a config element, so you will find it here. It contains the connection information, the URL, the login, the password, and then you have a bold request, it's a sampler, here, where you can configure your query parameters and whether you want to record query results or not. Another feature contributed by UbiCloudPack will ease the way to simulate returning users vs new users. As you know, in when you do some load testing, your virtual user may model a, re a user that is always the same running the iterations. So here you would say, I use the same user running four iteration. Or if you uncheck this, you consider that each thread iteration is a new user. So now you have this new checkbox and it is synchronized with the related HTTP element. So in Cookie Manager, I can check use thread group. In Cache Manager, I can also do that. And uh, it also uh, play reacts on the way HTTP re request works. So if, for example, I check this and hit, uh, hit UB Cloud Pack, for example, Let's run this. So we, you'll notice here that I get a cookie in the response here, and it's emitted in the next request. If I uncheck it and run it again, well, you notice that there is no cookie transmitted because the HTTP re request models a new uh, request by a new user. So if we hit another website, you also notice how it, it reacts on the HTTP request. Uh, so let's see, I've modeled the same user on each iteration. You'll notice here I've unchecked it, so it's a new user. You'll notice here that Keep Alive has max that does not evolve across request. If I this time model same user on each iteration, you'll notice that in fact here the cache has played a troll, so, so it has cached the request and I only have one request. To avoid caching, let's add some timestamp and call add the time function to, to the URL. So this time, since it's a different URL each time, I will have four requests. And here you'll notice that the keep alive doesn't change across time. It's always 100 modeling uh, a different uh, a new request and it also impacts the SSL handshake. 
So this feature simplifies uh, greatly the, this type of configuration, which you weren't able to do before. You had to launch two different instances of Jimmy. Nowadays, uh, JSON is playing uh, an increasing and very important role in microservices. And sometimes you have even libraries that um, do some call across different web microservices and merge JSON. So, my, so you need to make uh, and extract data in a way that is very powerful. There's a new uh, format uh, called GMS Pass that allows you to extract very powerfully data from uh, JSON request. You can see on their website uh, here uh, with the GMS Pass tutorial, you can see all the uh, options that you have to do some extraction. And the important ones are projections, the important um, improvement compared to JSON Pass are projections, uh, flattened projections, filter projections, pipe expression, uh, multi-select, and functions. You see here, I can count the, the length of people. So this, this has been contributed by UbiClockPack. And so suppose you have some JSON code. You will be able, thanks to a new extractor here, and you will be also able to uh, assert, thanks to this also new assertion, using this type of syntax. So here I'm extracting, let's see how it works in the view result tree. Uh, so I have I will use a JSON GMS tester. I have this body. And as you can see, I can extract multiple states across different instances. And uh, of course you can do whatever you whatever expression you want to, to play with uh, JSON and extract data from it. Uh, if you've done if you do uh, load testing on a frequent basis, you, we frequently require during data validation phase to, to split our data between the working data and the broken data. So uh, you could do that before using some Groovy and GSR 223. It has been simplified with this version of GBinter thanks to the contribution of a new function called string to file, which you can find here. So you put as a first parameter the path to the file and the string to write, which can contain the variable you want to save to a CSV file. And you can work in append or create mode here, which would be append. So in this case here, I have added a debug sampler that calls this function. I write the data to this file and I write, for example, the state which I have extracted in this extractor. So let's look, I've, I've run it uh, multiple times, and as you can see, it has been saved, the data has been saved here. So this simplifies greatly the, the data validation phase. Now let's look at backend listener improvement. It now supports InfluxDB2. It has been contributed by Jacob Bernard, and uh, it adds uh, the ability to pass an InfluxDB token to do authentication on Influx2. Uh, another uh, new enhancement provided by UbiCloudPack is uh, the XPass2 assertion. So in previous version, they had provided XPass2 extractor, and now they in added XPass2 ins assertion. So it, uh, you can uh, assert on XML in a way that is more powerful than XPass assertion, which only supported XPass1 and that is more performing because uh, the throughput is four times higher with XPass2 compared to XPass1. And the support on namespaces is much easier with XPass2. So let's see an example. So here I have asserted my assertion fails because I have indeed no body one tag, as you can see. So if I fix it, and run it again, this time it succeeds. Finally, one important uh, improvement is on the GDBC protocol provided by Franz Schwab. So he has improved two things in GDBC. Now you can pre-init or not the pool. Previously, it was not pre-init. So this is uh, very useful to simulate, to, to start with uh, known condition by pre-initing the pool. And another very interesting feature is the ability to limit result set 
when you sample a GDBC request to the, a SQL request to the database. Uh, also, the, the project has seen uh, important improvement uh, regarding its development. So it has been migrated by, thanks to Vladimir Sitnikov, from subversion to Git. So uh, it now uh, retains a contribution by uh, by people who contribute to Gmeter. So, for example, here you can see that uh, all contributors are retained here, even the one who contributes through pull requests. Uh, and it is it, it clearly eases the development and the contribution of PRs to, to Gmeter, and we've seen an increase in PR contribution. Another improvement is the migration from Ant to Gradle, and there is this web page on the project, which explains all the available command lines. The aim of this, those two features is to allow us to uh, distribute new version of Gmeter uh, at a more rapid pace. We will, I'd like also to thank Graham Russell, who provided a lot of PRs improving unit te tests, cleaning up code, etc. And in, of course, in this version, you, you'll see a lot of enhancements and bug fixes contributed by Apache Gmeter team. I hope you've enjoyed this video and will enjoy the new version of Gmeter. Uh, have fun with it. Bye-bye.